for one of this Denver Cyan series, guys. Oh, we have caught up. I, I, Wardy still wins. You guys have still not destroyed the tree. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Stargate coming up here to get going as we're going to be seeing these couple of things. How long did it take me to get caught up, by the way, as well? These sub gifts came in over an hour ago. Oh my god. <laughs> oh dear. Over an hour to get caught up. That's crazy. Thank you, everyone, for all of the love. I really appreciate it, as always. As much as I bitch and complain about having to hang you up on the tree, it's still all good. There is a scary number of decorations on that tree now. Like a terrifying number. There's a couple of probes do go down here. Denver able to get a couple of kills very early on. The dev just hanging out at the front. So a couple of devs together. We do see the Phoenix coming in to try and clean out this overlord. So already pushing this away over to the left hand side. He's been pretty consistent with how he's been playing. Just uh, Phoenix and Oracle every game. He's been pretty consistent going into resonating glaives behind it as well. We'll see if that's something he's going to try and do once again here, I suppose. Something's just patrolling at the moment. Did you see that Twilight Council dropping down from Cyan in the main base? Uh, Phoenix coming down to the bottom left-hand side with the Oracle, and we've seen him again do this a few times before today now. So expecting more from this as well. Honestly, I've kind of enjoyed Cyan's games here today. He's been putting up a good fight, like against Mana. The first game that he played was very, uh, very fun. As um, I actually had a really good time with that one. Uh, the statue, the game was still really full. It might not have been the first game, but it was uh, the second game. It was um, really, really fun, so. Yeah, we had some good stuff, and he uh, obviously took a map of Marine Lord. That was a good series, too. Sai has been showing us impress me today. Like he always does when he, because when he's playing on the European server from China, it's crazy. He did just kill five drones, which we were just watching, so that's nice, although Denver comes in and gets the probe trying to make the third base, so a little bit of revenge there with Resonating Glaives on the way. So Sai just with the same build, and used it twice in a row against Raynor. We'll see if he uses it twice in a row against Denver 2, or if he's going to change it up a bit. Anyways, we'll see how it goes for the moment as we do see Lair on the way up. The Baneless gets started as well, and that plus one melee on the way out of the Evo Chamber. This one melee obviously indicates a little bit as to what Denver wants to play as for playstyle as well. Lingbane Hydra obviously uh, kind of expected here then. See you later slowly, thanks for dropping by and hanging out today, appreciate it as always. As you do see this Phoenix coming all the way around the top left hand side. Adept shading forwards and a couple of lings getting picked off there. Cyan continuing all the way down to the bottom side of the map, so we're going to continue shading and it's uh, looking good at the moment. As these adepts come over and it's going to be uh, picking up a couple more Zergon kills. So a couple of things going down and Queen is uh, going to take some damage as well. The Banes though, oh no, those adepts, they were caught in on one side by the Zergon, so they couldn't really split in that direction. They would have had to split towards the Banes, I mean, probably would have still been better than nothing. For six drones. This is a complete loss on all of the Adepts here, and this gives Dendry a real opportunity now to potentially counterattack. There's so much you can do. Compared to when Cyan was able to keep all of these Adepts alive against Raynor, now he doesn't really have anything, and, well, running across the map, Denver will probably find some damage here, because there is not really going to be anything set to defend. There's a couple of sentries, and I suppose with good force fields, considering it is Ling focused out of Denver, I guess with a couple of force fields, a defense could be made, but still not looking pretty. As we get across here, these lings arriving to the third base. Force field dropping down. And the adept there to help pick off another Zerglin or so. So good job so far as the Oracle overhead is picking away and picking off a few of these Zerglings at the moment. Cyan still though, I mean you look at all of this and Cyan is still actually ahead on the supply. He's gone all the way up to 62 drones behind this and you know, he is surviving here with double Robo up, a prism on the way, an observer too, so you can keep some information going. Okay, okay. So, I mean, science position isn't bad. The work account is pretty even and it's looking good. What's up, Meg Xavier? Thank you so much for the 25 bits. Appreciate it, as always. Thank you, kind sir. 
Templar Archive is dropping down from Sion over in the main base, so getting that going for himself as again out in the center of the map, Denver trying to see what's going on here. If uh, these lings just moving kind of all over the place. A few more drones on the way up, some hydras on the way out. Plus two melee being added in. Ooh, a stasis ward there. Grabs a few of those zerglings that we do see. Flex the gates going down. I mean, this is obviously a good wall off, and against Ling Bane, you really do need a good wall off to make sure that you can try and nullify the Lingis and Banes just crashing through and the run by is being overly effective. A warp prism goes down, though. Great catch by Denver, and Sion just a little bit careless with that there. And that's a prism that's very expensive to replace. No, not really expensive, I suppose, but it takes time to replace rather than another immortal that could be on its way out. There's two on the forge, with Storm being crudely boosted as well, up on the Temple Archives. Neurotest Carapace is still taking along, there's that Muscular Augments coming along as well. All of these Zerglings up to the top side from Denver, going to be running by very shortly, as we do see Immortals picking up a Zergling just out the front. Got more cannons coming down, shield batteries as well as the fourth base gets established, and again, kind of feel like Cyan going up to the fourth base is nice. The only thing he's missing is maybe a little bit of pressure and a little bit of aggression, but that's just because he lost the warp prism the first time around, and against the Lingbane especially, it's very scary to move out on the map in case you do get kind of caught out in the middle of nowhere. It could be uh, some problems. Lanes over here, caught by the Stasis Ward, a good defense already on the first little bit of harassment. These Lings will not do much either. And Cyan for the moment is defending well and stopping Denver. I mean, Denver hasn't had gone for any huge attacks or anything like that. But anything he has gone uh, has gone for here, Cyan has had a pretty good response to. And Zerglin's coming back over and picking up another Adept. A whole bunch more Banelings currently on the way out. 13 of them being added in here. As we do see more Banelings morphing in the center. Hydras are splitting up in two different directions. We've got a bunch of these Banes finishing and going to get ready to come in and collapse on towards this set of units. So Denver coming in with a bit of a concave. First Storm comes down from Sign. He hasn't used any Storm so far this game, so his Templar are full of energy. That Storm was a bit uh, preemptive, just maybe expecting the Banes to roll forwards there. Didn't happen. That one too also just slowing the Banes down from being able to push further in. Hydras on the right side definitely causing some issues. A couple of higher Banes do connect there. Force Fields trying to help out here and there also. It's just these Hydras on the right. They're going to get the fourth base because there's just nothing that's actually fighting them or shutting them down. They're just kind of left kind of killing off whatever they want now. The High Templars all out of energy so no further storms. As Denver. Oh, okay. This side of Nexus survives for the moment but now the Archon gets picked off. These extra Immortals are looking like they'll probably fall as well. The extra Zealot Warpins will sort of charge through. A Phoenix lifts up a Hydra as well. Anything it can do to help out even the Oracle. As these Hydras do die pretty quickly. And with another wave of Zealot, he'll actually hold on to this fourth base. Denver will not be able to kill the fourth base here. And Cyan will hold. Now here comes the issue. Because Cyan did kill off a lot of the high-tech units. So there's no Storms available now. There's no Archons. There's only one Immortal. This is going to be the tough part. Cyan getting his uh, oh, high-tech unit count back up. Because that's going to be what he keeps him safe from these future attacks. But that's already one Immortal down. Zealots just used their charge. Chasing Zerglins to the left-hand side. As now Ling Bane comes in on the right. And now finally it looks as though he will pick up the Nexus. Get some probes as he's going at it. We see the uh, Banes trying to reach the High Templar. Zealots and Immortals. Well, nice force fields will keep the Banes out. It's good. But again, the fourth base will go down. So finally, damage achieved here. We're going to be seeing Lings and Hydras. Still being pushed back by the Zelts, the Adepts, the Immortals. Don't forget this is the fourth base though, and again, he should be fairly happy with that. Sets up a couple drop lords, intrigued to see if that's just going to be for bailing drops into other mineral lines, or if he has other plans for this. I guess we'll see very soon. What's up, Roark1? Oh, double O1. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Welcome to the Wardy family. It's so good to have you on board. Thank you so much for supporting. I really appreciate it. Oh, the probes are locked in themselves. Oh, and he blows them up before they recall. Oh, Cyan just lost 18 workers out of nowhere. Oh, what a frustration. I mean, the recall was uh, some quick thinking to try and get them out, but it just wasn't in time. As we are going to be seeing the uh, rest of this coming through. And well, Ling's Hydras and Banes continue to come forward right now. Zealot's going to have to continue backing off. And uh, this is looking as though this 
starting to be the beginning of the end. Another storm comes down, a couple of veins getting pushed away. Again, Hyde is coming in from a couple different directions, and this looks as though it's going to be GG. Denver. If a tree falls in a forest with nothing around to hear it, does it make a sound? If a tree falls on stream, does it confirm it's not green screened? Can you imagine this was all just a meme? My tree is actually just a green screen. And every time I add a decoration, I'm actually just switching pictures that I took. With, uh, you know, with the tree having an extra decoration with. You know? This is definitely the most full this tree has ever been, though. Like, usually the tree does okay, but it is absolutely jam-packed with decorations. I think we have over 300 decorations on it. I think we have over 300. Bottom right, Denver up a game now after that uh, first map. And to the top left, yeah, we've got our blue Protoss player, Cyan. Is it a real tree? No, it's just a plastic tree. I can't, aff I can't afford a real tree. I'm just a poor old StarCraft streamer. Real trees are so expensive, and they're a lot of effort. Only 8,700 more decorations ago. Aye, aye, aye. All right. So. Game getting going. Very exciting Nexus here. I have to not follow the Overlords as much, because people really get upset at me if I only follow the Overlords, so I've taken to just watching the Nexus instead. Coming out into the center of the map. Guys, if someone drops $45,000 of sub gifts, I don't actually think I'm going to be able to put them all in the tree. Because I actually think I'd just... It would become a full-time job, really. Just putting decorations on the tree. Yeah. It'd be, uh, be a bit different, wouldn't it? be a different life to live. Although I guess $45,000, I guess it is a full-time job salary, right? Poop salad with the name of the day, perhaps. I don't know. Lord Squish might still have my uh, have my vote on that one. Poop salad coming in with a fresh subscription as well. Thanks so much, guys. Again, the support today has been pretty bonkers. What's crazy? Uh, what's really awesome to see is it's not just gifted subs though. While the gifted subs have always been crazy and has been so loads of them, it's so great to see some of you guys uh, coming in and supporting on your own as well. Because um, obviously the gifted subs are. You know, it's nice and it boosts the sub count for a bit, but obviously it does drop back down. It's always nice to see yeah, fresh subs coming in and stuff. Even if you do just sub for a month though, and stuff like that. It's nice. Thank you so much for the sub poop salad. Appreciate it. Get you on the tree after the game. Figured I'd share the love. Well, thank you so much. Oh, the holiday season has been... I missed your first message. Holiday season has been great for business for me, so I figured I'd share the love. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. It wouldn't be 45k at once. You can only gift 100 subs at a time. True. I guess it would have to come in batches of $500. Link's coming up towards the upper left. You see Resonant Glaives on the way down on the Twilight Council. And... Getting this underway. Try that. Resonant Glaive's been Chrono boosted here. As we have got the Rotron. Dropping down in the back of the natural. Oh, we're coming back up to the top as we do see the Zerglings. Trying to get in towards the Nexus and... Oh, not really going to do too much just yet. We've seen Adept. 
wall, so good defense there. Again, very different style from Denver with this Rotron finishing up. He actually has quite a lot of gas. I wonder if he he has the lair on the way, so he's not going to go overly aggressive, right? There's going to be a follow-up to this. And he is going to make 11 Roaches because I guess he does need a defense against the Glaive Adepts. Sion just with the same build again and again, which I'm not really against because I don't think it's the opening build that's putting him behind or losing him the game. Although it is obviously weird not to maybe change up your style after your opponent's already seen what you're doing. Um, but I feel like it's the follow-up from there that's kind of, you know, things are going wrong a little bit. So I don't, I'm not against him using the same style. So here we go, coming down. So the bomb right hand side. It's a good amount of adepts, which you're going to start pushing in towards this base. Lings and roaches coming forwards, and those adepts will have to turn away for the moment. Two robo facilities being dropped down here. And as you can see, things, roaches and queens continue to come up and chase those adepts down. Extra extract is being taken as Denver's going to throw down a spire. Poor Sion. It's like Denver was just like, you know what, I kind of like what Reynold did in his series. Let's do that. First game, just kind of chill, hold on, and kind of win the game. Second game, boom, mutas. Let's see if it works out here. Flexa extract is coming through. Roach speed on its way as well. Poop salad. With a gifted sub to Ukro Samurai. Thank you so much. Spreading the love. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. Really do. Put some love in the chat, guys. We do have a spire dropping down here from Denver. In the main base. Again, lings, roaches, and queens all gathering up on that bottom right side as well. And well, again, those are depths just chilling out in the middle. Spire dropping down, as we've mentioned before, that's going to be finishing, so now the Mutalist can come on up, and, well, there's already a Phoenix being made here. Hasn't seen the Spire, but maybe expects it, or maybe he's just kind of being very precautionary. That'd be very precautionary, though. Deaths of Mortals in a few centuries. Still gathering up just over on this third base. Hydra's Den on the way up, and a Bane Nest dropping down too. Continue to get this going again. There goes that Stay Sword in the front, so just getting up a little bit of extra defense. Seven meters, so not too much of a commitment into the Mutalisks here. Seven, then switching into Hydra Bane. So, I kind of like it. It's, I always feel like it's very hard for seven meters not to find any damage, right? Because even if there's like just three or four Phoenix up, you'll still get a good few probes, and you've still forced a few Phoenix, right? Which Again, obviously, Phoenix aren't terrible to have. They will get some counter aggression themselves, perhaps, but in general, I mean, look at this. Already seven probes, he jumped down over here. And at the same time, these roaches actually dive in and grab an immortal. Those force fields miss, and the roaches are going to be able to get out. And yeah, Phoenix again, you can see. So the Phoenix were in decent numbers, and they have been able to shut this down. There's still eight workers. It acts as a bit of a distraction, so you could do other things as well. Was it, you know, were the mutants cost effective based on how much it cost Denver to do this? No, they probably weren't. But at the same time, I mean, this is probably one of the worst times we've seen Mutas kind of go, so... And even then, it's not terrible for them. There's still some opportunities. Roaches and Ravages. Getting ready to push in here. What's up, UCB? Coming in with a fresh new subscription as well. Thank you so much. You guys have been so generous today. The subs just do not stop, it seems. Thank you, thank you, thank you! As here we go. Denver going to collapse in on this as Zion was trying to poke down towards the potential for face location. I mean, just jumping right on this right now. These Immortals in some trouble. These couple of Adepts are actually going to get force fielded out there with the uh, Roaches. I mean, now there's only one Immortal left as we actually see Corrosive Powers on the Phoenix, which are lifting units, so they can't actually move away. It looks as though there's just going to be a little bit too much here from Denver as he pushes on through this 7-8 and counting workers killed. Obviously, the third base is starting to drop as well. Unfortunately, Cyan looks as though his only map win today is going to be a map win against the Marine Lord. As those Roaches and the Lynx have surrounds, killed off absolutely everything here. And this is looking to be GG. Denver takes game number two of this best.